Hey everyone, it's Matt here with Night Run Studio, and so far in this series, we've set up our quest log so that we can click on quests in order to see their description and rewards. We've also set it up to track so that if we complete something like, say, visiting the Green Hills, we can open that menu back up, click on that slot, and see that we've in fact completed that objective. However, at the moment, our buttons aren't doing anything over on the side here, we can't collect rewards, and there's actually no way to get these quests. We've got some work to do. In this video, we're going to set up a quest board that you can visit in order to have quests offered to you. And in the video after that, we'll make it possible for you to accept or decline those quests and have them interact with our log. That's where we're headed next. Let's get started. So first things first, we need a way to actually show the quest being offered in our UI. So we're going to head into quest log UI to do this. At the moment, we have handle quest clicked which allows us to click on quests in order to see them displayed. And we're actually going to be doing something very similar here. However, it's going to need some additional logic. So first thing, let's set up a public void method called show quest offer. This is what our quest board will be calling when it wants to display a quest. It's going to pass in a quest SO, which we're just going to call incoming quest SO, as we're going to be dealing with a couple of different ones in here eventually. Now for the moment, we just want to test this. We're going to keep it really simple and just call handle quest clicked and pass along the quest SO whenever this is called. Additionally, what we want to do here is actually open up the quest log whenever we are offering a quest. So let's pop back into Unity quickly. Now up until this point, we've just had this annoying quest log over top of everything. We've had to turn it off manually. That's a pain. So let's actually get it so we can toggle this a little more easily. First off, let's go to our quest canvas and we're actually going to add a canvas group on here. This will just allow us to toggle the alpha as well as the interactableness and raycast of all the child objects. Let's turn those off for now. That way, in our script, we can actually turn them all back on again. We'll have to start by creating a serialized private reference to that canvas group. We'll call this one Quest Canvas. Now then, whenever we call Show Quest Offer, we can turn it on. So let's start by getting our Quest Canvas and setting its alpha to 1, so it'll be fully opaque. We'll also get our Quest Canvas and set it so that it is blocking raycast. We're not going to worry about the interactableness for just now. So back in Unity, we can click on our quest log and drag the quest canvas in there. However, at the moment, we have no way to call this show offer method that we've created. So let's go ahead and create our quest board. Later, we will make it so we can trigger this from an NPC, but we're going to start with the simplest case first. So first thing off, I'm just going to go into Deco in the Tiny Swords Asset Pack. I'm going to make it so I can actually see these icons, and I'm just going to grab this little signpost here and drag it up into my hierarchy. I'll just rename this as Quest Board, and then I'm just going to double click on it to find where on earth it is, and drag it back into my map so I can actually interact with it. We'll just quickly set this up now. So first I'm going to add a box collider and just set it up so that we can actually like bump into this object. I'll then add a circle collider, and this is going to be what it detects when the player is close enough to interact. So we'll set this to is trigger, and then I realize when I click edit we can't see it, so let's just move it to a different colored background. Now I can edit the collider, let's just make it a tiny bit larger so that when the player is within this circle, he can interact with the board. All that remains now is to give it some logic for how to behave, so let's create a new C -sharp script and call this one quest board. Let's begin by getting rid of the start and update methods. And now the first thing this quest needs is to know which quest it's going to be offering. So let's make a serialized private quest SO field called quest to offer. Additionally, we need to know if the player is close enough to interact with it. And we'll track this with a bool called player in range. Now in order to toggle this player in range, we're going to use our on trigger enter method. And here we're just going to do an if check. So if the collision game object, the thing that just walked into this trigger, has a tag, we'll use compare tag here, called player, then we'll set player and range to true. We'll then just copy and paste this entire method, make player and range go to false, and do this when we exit the trigger. With that, we're ready to actually trigger this quest being shown. So, sorry, we're going to add back the update method. And here, if our player is in range and we are pushing down the interact button, I'll show you how that works in case you're not familiar with it. So when we make a call to the interact button, here's what we're actually doing. We're going to go to Edit, down to Project Settings, and then here we're going to look at our Input Manager. You can toggle your axes open and closed here, and I've created a button here called Interact. You can create your own by just typing in the name, and then down below give it a positive button. I'm just using the K button or mouse 2. So, anytime we are in range of the board and we press Interact, we want to call this Show Quest Offer method we made earlier in Quest Log UI. So how are we going to do that? We can't drag in a reference because the quest board exists in one scene and the quest UI is going to be traveling with the player in between scenes. 
And so we're going to use an event here. Now I could create an event right inside of quest board. However, we're going to probably want to show quests from things more than just the quest board, like for example, NPCs, or maybe when you collect an item or visit a location. And so we're going to come up with a utility script that will allow us to create special events just for our quests. So in Unity, let's go ahead and create a new C Sharp script, and we're just going to call this one Quest Events. Let's open it up. Now this one's going to be a little different from any quest we've made before in the series. Let's just start off by getting rid of the extra namespaces. We will need the using system namespace, however. We can get rid of start and update, and then this class will not be deriving from mono behavior. It's just going to be a static class, which means we don't have to put it in the game and scripts will be able to use its logic. Inside of here is where we're going to create our event. So let's make a public static action. That's the type of event we'll be using here. It's going to be passing along a quest SO, and we're simply going to call this one on quest offer requested. That's all we need to do there, and now that logic will be available to our quest board. So whenever the player's in range and pushes interact, we can tell quest events that it needs to call its on quest offer requested event. Here we're just going to check to see if anyone is listening to the event call by putting a question mark, and then we will invoke the event. In the brackets here, we're just going to pass along the quest SO that we would like to offer. That's all we need to do in our quest board, but we do need to make sure that quest log UI is listening. So here we're going to create an on enable method. And as soon as this script is enabled, we want to have it talk to quest events, get that on quest offer requested event and subscribe to it. Whenever it's called, then we want to call our show quest offer method. Now we don't just want to leave a subscription dangling in case this object is destroyed or inactive or whatever. And so we're going to call on disable. We'll then paste in that same event call, but put a subtraction, meaning we'll unsubscribe and stop listening to it. That's all we need to do here. I would encourage you to hit save all in case you've not been saving all these different scripts we've been in, and we're ready to test. Back in Unity, let's click on our quest board and make sure to add the quest board script. Now it is going to need to know what quest it is currently going to be offering. I'm just going to duplicate an existing quest here. I'm just going to call this one quest test. We'll just call it test as the name. I'll just put this as a test. We'll make it level zero. Let's, uh, we can just leave the objectives there. And then we'll give it a couple of rewards. Let's give it a gold and experience reward just to make sure things are working properly. With that done, we can click on our quest board, drag in the test quest, and let's see how it works. Now, when I get in the game, I can walk up to the quest board, hit K, and there it is. Test is in fact printing. You'll notice that all of my buttons and slots are currently semi-transparent. That's because they are currently disabled. You can see here on the canvas that when disabled, their alpha goes down. Don't worry, we'll play around with that in just a moment. Now there's just one problem here. We've got a pretty decent looking quest log. It's updating. However, it would be nice to get these buttons working. For example, when we are showing a quest, complete shouldn't be an option unless it's actually complete. We want that button to go away and the accept and decline to become active. So let's go ahead and make that happen. So what we want to do here is get our show quest offer and add some complexity so that we can toggle our buttons. To do this, we're going to need to come up top first of all, and just like we made this reference to the canvas group for the quest canvas, we're going to make three more of these. One for our accept canvas group, one for decline, and one for complete. Now back in Unity, if I were to click on the quest log and try to drag in accept into the accept canvas group, you'll notice that it's not working. That's because none of our buttons currently have a canvas group. So let's just shift click them all and add that now. From here, we can toggle their alpha and interactability as well as whether or not they block raycast. Now, when we click on quest log, we can go ahead and drag those in. So right now in show quest offer, if we wanted, we could do what we've done with the quest canvas and individually line by line, set the alpha, raycast and interactableness of all four of these canvases. However, that's a lot of work and would take up a lot of space. So let's create a helper method here this will be a private void method called set canvas state, which will literally set the state of the canvas. Here it's going to need to know which canvas group it's setting. And then we're also going to need a bool to tell it whether or not we're activating or deactivating. At that point, all we'll do is we'll take the group that's been passed in and set its alpha not to one like we did for quest canvas, but instead we'll ask a question. We're just going to say, are we activating? And if so, we'll set the alpha to one. If not, we'll set it to zero. We can then do something similar for blocking raycast, and here we'll just put activate. So if it's true, it'll turn it on. If false, it'll turn it off. We can then do the exact same thing for its interactability. Now then we can get rid of this old logic for the quest canvas and use our helper method to do it much more efficiently. Here we'll call set canvas state. 
We'll pass along our quest canvas, and if we're showing a quest offer, we always want to turn it on, so we'll put true. We can now customize this for each of our different buttons, so we'll set the canvas state for the accept canvas group, as we'll want to turn that on as it's an option anytime we're showing a quest, and we'll also want to set true the decline canvas group. Next, we'll set the canvas state for our complete canvas group, which at this point we want to hide, so we'll put false. No setup necessary at this point, we can just walk up to the quest board, hit interact, and you'll notice that now our accept and decline button appear, complete has been hidden, and the buttons are actually interactable even though they don't do anything yet. That's where we're going to head in our next video, making it so we can accept or decline quests and then have them head into our log. Hope to see you in that video. Until then, this is Matt with Nightrun Studio. Cheers.